Hello and welcome to lecture number 7 in the Intro to Python video series. In this lecture, we'll be taking a look into list comprehensions. List comprehension is a concise way to create lists in Python. So list comprehensions can be used to create new lists from already existing list. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have the nums variable, which is a list that contains numbers starting from minus 2 all the way up to 2. And let's say we want to create a list that contains the square of all these numbers. So from what we've learned so far, we can do this by using a for loop. So let's start off by initializing the new list that we want to create. We'll initialize it as an empty list. Then we can loop through all the elements in nums and then append the square of each of these numbers to the squares uh, list. Now if we print squares, you will see that it has the elements 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, which are the squares of these numbers over here. But in Python, there's a much shorter way to write this in the form of list comprehension. So instead of writing these multiple lines, you can write a simpler code using list comprehension in a single line. So you can do something like squares equals square bracket x star star 2 for x square for x in nums. And if you print squares here, you'll see that you get the same result. So as we see here, we can create a new list containing the square of all the numbers in nums by just using a list comprehension. Let's uh, look at another example where we want to create a new list that contains the absolute value of all the elements in the list. So let's call this abs nums. And then there's a function in Python called abs that returns the absolute value of any number. So we can do something like abs of x for x in nums. If we print abs nums, we'll see that now we have a new list that contains the absolute value of all the elements in the nums array. You can also include conditional statements in list comprehension to filter some of the elements. So let's say we want to create a new sublist from this particular list that only contains the positive value in nums. So you can do this by saying post nums equals list of all x for x in nums if x is greater than 0. Now if you print postnums, so you will see that postnum contains all the positive elements that were in the original list. List comprehension can also be nested, allowing for more complex data transformations. So let's consider a metrics variable that contains a list of lists. So this is a list that contains three sublists, each of length two. Now let's say we want to flatten this list. So flattening the list basically means you take a list of lists and then return a list. So here the required output is a list that contains each of these elements that were in the original list of lists. So let's take a look at how we could do this using just for loops. So let's first initialize a variable called flat matrix that is just a list. Then we can iterate through all the lists in the matrix. So for sublist in matrix, now sublist will be each of these list elements here and then you want to iterate through each of these elements within that sublist. So we can do something like for item in sublist. Then we want to append each of these elements into your flat matrix so that we get a list like this. So we can do flat matrix.append item and end the loop and if you print flat matrix you will see that you get a flattened version of this particular matrix list that you had. You can do the same thing and write it in a concise way by using list comprehension. So you can do flat matrix equals set of all items for sublist in matrix for item in sublist. And if you print flat matrix, you will see that you get the same results as the result over here. So when starting off with Python, this sort of uh, list comprehension style coding might seem slightly unintuitive and you might prefer this one, uh, but I promise you with time, you will find that this is a much easier way and cleaner way to write code in Python than writing these nested for loop. Right, now let's maybe take a look at our example problem. So here we have an example problem statement given to list. Get the list that is a sum of elements at each position. So I'm going to add uh, two lists over here. Let's call them list one and list two. And then our required output is basically a list that is the sum of each of these elements. So the first one is one plus 10, so it will be 11. The second one is two plus 11, that's 13. And finally you have three plus 12, which is 15. 
So you want a way to create a new list that is the sum of two given input lists. So let's see first how we could do this using just for loops. So let's initialize our result list uh, as an empty list. And then we iterate through indices that will go from zero all the way up to the end of the list so that we can pick each of these elements. So we can do something like for idx in range len of list one. Of course, this assumes that list one and list two have the same length. And then you can do result dot append uh, list one of idx plus list two of idx. And then if we print result, you'll see that we get the desired result. So what's happening here is idx is going from zero all the way up to 0, 1, and 2. So we have length of list to be 3, and range will go from 0 to 2. And then at each iteration of the for loop, you are taking the element from list 1 at that index, and element from list 2 at that index, and then adding them together to finally append it onto the result list. Now you can do the same thing using list comprehension, and we will use a zip function. So let me show you how to do that first. So let's say we call our result as sum list. You can do x plus y for x comma y in zip list one comma list two. Now if we print sum list, we'll see that we basically get the same result. So zip here is basically how a zipper works. It takes two inputs or multiple sequences and then zips them together. So let's see what the output of uh, zipping two lists are. So let's call zip list one, list two, and then we'll convert the output of the, of the zip to a list by calling list on it. And then we see that the output contains basically a list of sequences where the first one is 1 comma 10. So that's the first element in each of these lists. The second one is 2 comma 11. So that's the second element in both the lists. And finally, you have 3 comma 12, which is the third element in both these lists. So each element here is a tuple. We'll look at tuples in a following chapter and we'll understand what they are. So what basically uh, zip is doing here is it's taking these lists and combining them together where each element contains the elements from those particular lists at that given index. That's it for this chapter. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture.